Okay. Today, I'm going to paint a United States Super Pershing from uh, the Flames of War game, which is a 15 millimeter World War II uh, tabletop war game. Uh, but this tank is not limited to that game specifically. Any World War II game of this scale would work just fine. Uh, this is a Super Pershing, as I said. Uh, as far as I am aware, they were never actually fielded in battle. The The normal Pershing was near the end of the war. The Super Pershing, however, was not. So for that reason, I'm going to paint him however I want. I'm going to paint him in Desert Scheme. Since, it's, since they never actually deployed, then it's plausible they may have painted some in a Desert Scheme. I don't know. But that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start... I'm going to start with Agrax Earthshade. This is a brown wash. It doesn't have to be if you were trying to replicate this. It doesn't have to be this color specifically. Any brown wash will work. But I'm just going to put this all over the tank. Just to start the, uh, just to start the process here. And this will give us some nice shadows in... All the little details of the tank as well as not darken the main body of the tank down too much so that we can't come back and brighten it back up with some dry brushing which is what we are going to do but starting with this wash and I'm just putting it all over the place making sure it's not too thick in any one spot uh, just brushing it around as needed just making sure that it settles in all the cracks and crevices. I'm actually gonna pop the turret off of this tank while I do this part. I'll put it back on in a minute. But as you can see, just making sure that the, the wash gets into all the little nooks and crannies but isn't too thick. And if it's not 100% perfectly accurate, that's okay. Um, we're going to dirty this tank up some, so if there's some splotchiness or some, some uneven coating, it's not the end of the world. So just make sure you get it all over every bit of it. Okay, that looks about right for this. I'll put the turret back on in just a second. Uh, just making sure I get all the spots here. Yep, that looks good. I'm going to put the turret back on. And I'll do the same thing with the turret. I'm just going to hang on to the barrel. This will freely swing around, so... And you just want to make sure I'm actually going to take it off and do it because you don't want when you're doing the turret You don't want the The wash to run down and pool on the uh, On the main part of the body right here, so I'll just pull it off And put the ink on this way And then come back later and put the turret back on for some things um we are one gonna going to want to have the turret on the tank so that the paint job is consistent. Uh, so, like when we go to dry brush it, we'll want consistent weathering across the whole thing, and parts that are covered up or not covered up by the turret will want to make sure that they're weathered appropriately. And so, for that, we'll want the turret to be on the tank. Do you sell all the minis and paint supplies? Yes, the store absolutely does. Um, we, this tank specifically, I don't know if we have it in stock currently, but we can absolutely order it. Um, other, we do have some tanks uh, in stock as well as a plethora of other miniatures. And yes, all the paints that I am using uh, in this video are 99% of the time in stock. If one happens to be out of stock, it can be ordered. Um, I try my absolute best to never use something that is not for sale at the store. 
sometimes an occasional thing will slip in, but in this case, um, everything is available at the store. So we get the underside of this turret just in case. All right. So then this doesn't look like it's going to run anywhere, so I'll put this back. Actually, I do need to do the barrel technically. So yeah, I'll put it back on the main body of the tank here. And just do the barrel real quick. It's not super important on the barrel. Actually, I can hold the machine gun because that'll be a different color later. Just for consistency, I will put it on the barrel. All right, so there's that done. We're gonna have to wait for that to dry before we do any dry brushing on it. But we will move on to the treads, I think. Yeah, I think I'll work on the treads. So I'm gonna start off super dark on the treads and then bring them back down because I'm going to put quite a lot of mud and stuff on the treads so um, I'm going to start with a color that's going to contrast against all that mud a lot more even though it may not be uh, historically accurate that these treads would have been black I actually don't know I assume they would be the same color as the tank um, but I'm going to do them in black along with all the wheels and everything um, just so that I have more of a contrast against the mud that we're going to put on it not going for a hundred percent historical accuracy just something that would look cool on the table but also like you wouldn't get laughed off the board if you brought like neon green with pink stripes and said yeah these are these are pretty historical then no but some black treads with a bunch of mud on them, you know, that's fine. So I'm just going to cover all the treads and the wheels and the interior walls of the track assembly here. And I'm also going to, while I'm at it, paint the machine gun as well as whatever this thing is. I probably should have done my research more on what that is. Um, I looked up a few pictures of the Pershing and the Super Pershing, and I saw that thing on there, but I don't actually know what it was. Know what it is, rather. Do you have beginner game classes for the game user 4? I'm interested in tabletop gaming, but don't have anyone to game with. Uh, so normally, yes, that would be an option. However, because of the current global health situation, that's less possible. Um, but normally, yes, there are people who would be, who would be willing. We don't usually, um, organize beginner games like as the store, but if you were to join, um, the miniature gaming Facebook group and then just ask for, um, Hey, is anyone available to teach me flames of war today? Or whatever like I said again in a normal situation without a global pandemic um, then that would be possible but it's not typical that we do anything at the store level um, but after the stream I can send you an invite to the um, to the Facebook group that does the wargaming and that can uh, that can at least help you get started there aren't a ton of people who play flames of war specifically this game that this tank is for on the regular um, we're pretty Warhammer focused in our gaming group but there are absolutely people who will uh, who will play it and who have armies for it so just making sure to get all of the tread and wheel assembly that is visible I'm not super worried about painting stuff that isn't going to be visible. I know some people will get into that. If it's on the miniature, they want it to have paint on it. But if you're never going to see it, I don't care if it's colored. So 
just get some black down through here. Alright, and then the other tread, or track assembly, whatever you'd like to call it. This is probably the the most tedious part of the paint job because of the the depth of these things is pretty significant compared to what you normally find on tabletop miniatures. Usually uh they're you know not the the difference in depth of different parts of the miniature are not as great as they are in this situation. Doesn't have to be Flames of War. Play Warhammer on the computer and console games. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So after the stream, I'll uh, I'll send you a link or an invite to the uh, tabletop gaming group. Um, we have a we have a war gaming group and a board game group. Um, I personally participate much more in the war gaming side of things, but the board game group is run by a very nice group of people. So if that was something you're interested in also, wouldn't hurt to take a look. All right. Almost done here, and then I will just paint the machine gun in the same black, and then I think that'll be it for right now. They have the... No, okay. Some of those tanks uh, in this line have, uh, like, stuff on the back, like uh, shovels and water tanks or gas tanks or all sorts of stuff that people would strap to the back of the tank. So this tank does not seem to have that, though, so we won't have to worry about any of that. And we'll probably come back with the black later and put some uh, some burn on the muzzle of the gun since I'm sure that would occur all right there's the treads painted up oh, almost I grew up in a D and D family so somewhat familiar perfect yep same idea, just a larger scale, and you're controlling, obviously, many more guys, many more models than just a character, but definitely a good way to get into it, for sure. And done. Yep, done. That's it. Um, I do usually to stop or talk about stopping places on models uh, when I do these streams, and this is absolutely correct. Uh, right now, you could be done. Um, especially at a small scale like 15 mil, um, you could put ink on the tank, paint the treads, paint the machine gun, and technically call it a day. Uh, and if you walked up with a fully painted army of tanks that look like this, no one is going to, well, no one who's not a rude person is going to uh, insult you. This would be perfectly acceptable. We're going to keep going, though. Just, you know, why not? Since we're already here. We'll keep going. I did just notice there's a uh, a hull mounted gun in here. I'm wondering if this thing up here is a flamethrower. It kind of looks like it could be. Uh, that might be ridiculous. And like, why would you think it's a flamethrower, Greg? What the heck? But I'm kind of looking at it and I'm wondering. It might be. I don't know what else. The problem is also this thing here, this two-barreled assembly thing here I'm talking about. I don't know if the angle that it's at is the angle that it's, it would be at when in, in use, or if it's just kind of hung there, and it would be pointed straight ahead to use, so I don't know. But I'm, I think it might be a flamethrower. Whatever. I'll look it up after the stream. We'll figure it out. Definitely paint before you play. Um, that's a point of contention tournaments and organized events generally 
want you to have a fully painted army before you play. Uh, not always, but usually. Um, but for just a pickup game with someone at the store or at your house or something, painting is absolutely not required. Um, you can be bare gray plastic straight out of the box. Um, but for bigger events, you typically want to have your your stuff all painted. So I think I'm going to go to the dry brushing now. Uh, this ink that we put on the tank is uh, all dried up. So I'm going to do two layers of dry brushing here. I'm going to do start with Talarn sand. And then I'm going to do some Rakarth flesh on top of that. And I'm using the makeup brush for this. Um, this is one of the few things that is not available at Galactic, um, is this makeup brush. Um, but makeup brushes are not a specialized hobby tool. You can get them literally anywhere. This one came in a pack of like seven from Walmart. So they're not specifically a hobby supply. So we do not sell them. Although it might be something to look into. You never know. So I'm just going to take this and just like dry brushing before that I've explained before, I'm putting some paint on it and then tapping most of the paint off. Remember, this is our this is our paint color. So as you can see, most of it is gone. Wiped most of it off on a paper towel. And then I'm just going to come in and gently go... I'm going to take this off, I think, so it's not flying around. And wipe up that little bit of ink there. So then I'm just going to go across the tank like this. And get some of this paint to come off on the ridges and edges of this tank. You may not be able to notice a difference immediately, but I bet when I hold up the turret to this, you'll be able to see the difference. So here's the turret, and there's the dry brush tank. It's not a huge difference in color, but it is there. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the turret, just so they look the same. Looks good, I'm gonna put it back on the tank now, just to make sure the colors are lining up, and they are. So I'm just gonna hang on to this, and then I'm gonna do the barrel real quick. That'll do. Just make sure the armor plate is Done up. All right. So that's our first dry brush. Then, like I said, I'm going to go to the Rackarth flush. Um, because I'm dry brushing, I need to keep this brush very dry, as one might imagine. Uh, so I'm not going to rinse my brush between steps on this one. I'm just going to go straight into the Rackarth flush. Um, this is a problem for some people. Uh, they, they don't like even the very smallest of chances of their paints mixing. Um, but... In this case, it's fine, and uh, if you did wash this brush off, it would be probably 10, at least 5 minutes of trying to dry this brush out before you can move on to the next step. So I prefer to just go straight into the next color. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to pop the tread off. And the only thing I'm going to do differently this time is when I did the other color of dry brush, I had the tank like this, and I was going up and down. And th for this one, I'm going to turn the tank like this and go up and down. That way, we're not just completely hiding the first dry brush with the second dry brush. They will, of course, cover, or the second one will, of course, cover some of the first one. But because we're moving in a different direction, the same edges won't catch the exact same paint. And so we'll be able to see both colors still. So I'm just going to go up and down like this. like that. So then again, you may not be able to tell much of a difference, but if I put them together, you can see that the body of the tank has gotten a little bit lighter. So we'll do the same thing with the turret again. And again, turned it the opposite way I had it before. Just so the first dry brush will shine through a little bit. Just like that, that'll work. Then we'll put this turret back on. And that is basically our the body of our tank done. 
we'll obviously move into some details now, but this is another place you could stop, uh, put those two dry brushes on and throw that on the table and call it a day. You'd be all set. But we are going to go a little bit farther here. Gives a super dirty and worn look. Yep. It makes it look just like sand has battered against it or, you know, who knows what might have happened. Um, you can go in and do some chipping and stuff uh, on the body to make it look like the paint has come off. I think that's a bit too much of an advanced technique for a stream like this. Uh, so I'm not going to go in that direction. But I am going to paint some details on this now. Uh, I'm going to take a dark silver. Iron Warriors specifically. And I'm just going to pick out a couple details here. And so let's see. Um, I'm going to pick out like the handles of the hatches on top here. They most likely would have not been metallic like this. They would have been painted the same as the, uh, as the rest of the tank. However, it gives your tank just a little bit of life. Um, this is a time where you can get away from historical accuracy if it makes the paint job stand out a little bit better. Uh, so now I'm just kind of touching my brush in different places around the machine gun here just to get it a sort of a gunmetal look without too much effort. Leave some of the black showing through, but get the silver on there a little bit. How would you do a camp look like jungle or nom style? Uh, that would be, well, so you could either do just straight green, uh, your typical army green, or you could do camouflage, which, uh, oh yeah, that's probably what you meant. Not camp look, camo look. Yep, got it. I'm tracking now. Um, so there's different things you can spray through, so little stencils. Um, otherwise, it's just paint them on and you just want to paint splotches and then paint other splotches overlapping those splotches and just work your way through from there. Um, typical, like just splotch camo as I call it, is, a, is the simplest camo to, to paint. Uh, when you start getting into the digital camo and stuff like that, I have no idea how to make that happen. I'm sure there, there's probably probably like stencils or some secret trick to doing it but I am not aware of such a thing so the same thing I did on the machine gun now I'm just touching different bits of the the wheel track assembly down here just to give it a a worn metallic look or like a gunmetal and I'll do the same thing on the other side Just making sure to touch like the the screw or the the bolts inside each wheel here, around the wheel, this little cap in the middle, that sort of thing. So let's see what else needs to be picked out. I think I will pick out these grates here. Uh, I'm just gonna do this straight. Mm, I'm actually not. I was gonna do them in the silver. Change my mind though. I'm gonna do them in. I'm gonna use some Nuln oil, which is just like the brown wash we used in the beginning, but it's a black instead. And I'm just gonna put this in all the grates that are on this tank here, just to make them, they'll still be this tan brown color, but they'll just be a little bit darker and so they'll stand out against the rest of the tank. Just fill these in like this. And then these ones behind the turret here. Just like this. And then I'm going to put this wash in just a couple small places uh, to specifically target it. So I'm going to do it in this crease or this crack, whatever, running between these two armor panels. Just like that. And this will just give the whole tank a bit more contrast since it is largely one color. 
we do want to we want to be able to see some contrast in the pieces so I just did it around that hatch I'll do it around this other hatch like that and around this handle or whatever it is then I think around this armor plate like that and I'll do it on the same same thing I did on the other side right along there and then there's just a couple little armor panels here I'll run it through the lines between those panels didn't do it on the other side so I'll do that real quick and then what we have here so I'll do some here and this is the kind of thing that is not necessarily you're not gonna be able to immediately notice it but the lack of it you would notice the tank would just look a little bit too flat and not as lifelike as opposed to if you put a uh, put this stuff around because like you know there's oil floating around in tank camps and soot from the exhaust and all sorts of stuff so these tanks would get would get pretty disgusting i imagine not to mention all the dirt and sand and mud they're churning through every day which we will come to in just a second just gonna put some there and then I'm gonna put some right here on the barrel a little too much just wipe it off and put some here all right so that's probably about it for this you can really spend as long as you want with this just picking out new spots putting some more some more ink down pick a new spot but you know, it can only go on for so long, especially when you're on stream. So uh, now I'm going to do just some basic uh, soot or powder burn on the end of the muzzle. For that, I'm just going to use Abaddon Black. Just your basic black paint. And I'm going to get a larger brush. And sort of like we did dry brushing earlier, I'm going to get most of it off. And then I'm just going to work my brush around the edge here and if you get too much you can wipe it off a little bit tap some more on wipe it off a little bit you don't want it to be completely black but you know it would be firing a lot at least like I said I don't think these were ever used in war but in this instance, we can say it was used in war, so there you go. There's just a little bit of powder burn or something on the end of the barrel. And then, I think for this paint job, I think we're going to call that about done. But then, So this is another uh, stopping place. You could, you could end right here, call it a day. No one would, uh, no one would make fun of you for having this paint job on a table especially with 10 more tanks lined up next to it but uh we're gonna go on to the last step which is always a an optional step for miniatures because it can be kind of scary so we're gonna take some armageddon dust which is a texture paint from citadel so what that means is there's there's a paint just like normal paint but in it there's texture which you can sort of see just little fine bits of sand or maybe some gravel whatever is thrown in there just some grit basically um i use this because i'm lazy um however you can make this stuff or something very similar to it uh at home a uh, little bit of dirt from outside or some sand some pva glue elmer's glue works just fine and some water mix that around put it on the miniature that stuff will dry like concrete and you'll be all set so I'm just going to take some of this stuff and I'm just going to ruin our paint job. Here we go. I'm just going to tap this in all over the tread assembly here. Make sure to get it all over the treads here. And 
here and you can get as much or as little as you want of this stuff in here you just want to make sure that you can see some of the texture because otherwise you're just putting sort of puke yellow paint on these things and oh I didn't paint the back this back of this tread oh well covered it with that anyway so then once you got it on there now it just looks like we painted it yellow which is not really gonna not gonna sell as anything so what I then do is take some paper towel or your finger even if you wanted and I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna wipe it off with this paper towel smear it around maybe get a little water on your brush uh, let's see I'll use this brush get a little water and just kind of dab it around move it around a little bit just so you can start to see in some places some of the black coming back in that we did earlier and you can move this around into different places so that's a good amount of water so then you take a dry brush like this and you just come through and because when they got back to camp uh, I'm sure there would be someone with a hose who was doing their best to kind of top fell off to clean off some of the grit and stuff that got all over their tanks because eventually these things would gum up so you just kind of tap around until you're until you're roughly happy with the level of grit that's on there and then you can of course just stop there but i always do a second coat um i'll go back to the rackarth flush i suppose and i'll just give it a little dry brush just so that there's some different texture in it and the texture that's in the the paint will get hit by this dry brush just go back and forth across here make sure to get up on these front parts of the treads too just like that and so if you were doing this with um, a homemade version you could either add some paint uh, beforehand and then uh, it would be tinted that paint color or you could paint it afterward um, either one would work now I am actually going to maybe if I have one yep so I'm going to add a second color of this mud and stuff so I'm going to use sterling mud for this it's the exact same thing as the first texture it's just a darker color I'm going to grab some of this and I'm going to be more sparing with this I'm just going to kind of put it in a couple places so hopefully to get the look that the whole tread is dirty but in a couple places there's some more mud or whatever on the tread itself would be probably the muddiest part just do some of this and then on the side just kind of tap it in a couple places just so you have a a two-toned mud look there and let that dry and then you could go back and dry brush that again if you felt the need um, I'll probably just leave it like that though um, and so then if I can get this turret back on there we go so then that's about it for this model um, there's no base on this model so that's gonna cut the painting time down quite a bit but that'll do uh, not the most high fidelity paint job as usual but if you put this on the board especially lined up with a bunch of others like I said you would absolutely be fine have no problems potentially competing for a best painted award since a lot of people don't actually paint their stuff so keep that in mind uh, so that'll do it for this episode um, I'll be back next week possibly painting a dragon I say it every week I'm going to try to get my hands on a dragon to paint on one of these streams. Maybe next week will be it. If not, I'm so sorry. Maybe the week after that. Um, otherwise, in the 40K group, I'll be back on Friday at 1 o'clock painting something Warhammer related. And yeah, that's about it. So next week, same time, same place. Or Warhammer group, Friday at 1. 
Thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.